Oke, okay. Oke. Okay. Ya, comrades and friends. Today CPM Lestar Central Committee is starting its uh, online campaign against uh, Manwadi Hindutva. RSS led Manwadi Hindutva process. This is a national political campaign called by the Central Committee of the CPM Lestar in continuation of its uh, 12th Party Congress resolution, political resolution to identify the struggle against the RSS that neo fascist in the fascist law. So today inaugurating the series of webinars to be concluded on 25th December. The national political campaign is starting from 6th December uh, on the day of the Memorial Day of Dr. Ambedkar and uh, the demolition of Babri Masjid by Hindu uh, uh, fascist forces. And it, the national political campaign will conclude on 25th December, Memorial Historical Day, when uh, B.R. Ambedkar let masses earn the Manusmriti, the theoretical basis of the RSS fascism. So today, Party General Secretary, Comrade P.J. James, starting with the first webinar. Uh, focusing on the relevance of this policy national political campaign. I request, on behalf of the Central Committee of the Party, I request Comrade P.J. James to deliver the speech on the relevance of the national political campaign of the party. Comrade P.J. Comrades and friends, the CPAML Red Star. Uh, the Central Committee of the Party has, uh, has decided to have a national political campaign starting from December 6 uh, and ending with uh, December 25. So this uh, political campaign is very important today because we know that our country is in the firm grip of RSS, world's longest running and biggest fascist organization today. And uh, now, led by RSS, the, they are now, as per reports, the 2025 is going to be the centenary of RSS formation. And so they are entering into, they are now uh, engaged in a maddening phase towards the ultimate goal of transforming India, India into a Hindu Rashtra. So when the CPML Red Star Central Committee uh, decided this national political campaign against RSS neo-fascism, uh, the party had its 12th Congress towards the end of September 2022. In that 12th Congress, among very important documents, the political resolution adopted by the party, adopted by the party, highlighted, it resolved that the immediate task in front of the democratic forces, progressive democratic forces, and all well-meaning people, workers, peasants, and all oppressed of this country today is to resist and defeat this neo-fascism, which means fascism in the neoliberal period. That is the immediate and the more stringent task of the people of this country. It is in conformity with that. It is in continuation of that. The Central Committee, based on a threadbare discussion, has uh, called for a national political campaign starting from December 6 to December 25. The importance of these days we know because uh, December 26, 1992 was a milestone for India. 
it actually inaugurated the the murdering this murdering piece it was in on that day that uh, babri masjid was demolished by the rss hooligans with the tacit support of the the then rao government and when security forces were mere spectators the babri masjid was uh, pulled down by the fascists starting from that and we must also know that this was a contest when our the so called nehruvian development paradigm that we were following till then was abandoned by the indian ruling classes at that time led by the congress and adopted a neo liberal regime unfettered unhindered entry of corporate foreign corporate capital and its integration with uh, indian corporates and uh, uh, allowing of market forces to all fields and abandoning of the state led development that we were pursuing till then and it was in that contest it was the, in that uh, far right turn in economic policies that the rss was also uh, hastened its uh, move forward its agenda and as a uh, history shows the basis of fascism the material basis of fascism is capital corporate capital so when corporate capital far right forces are advancing this neo fascist are also advancing along with that so it is it goes in tandem with uh, the transformation of our economy our polity in the far right direction today we know that uh, uh, the modi government as we know in 1992 this uh, uh, babri masjid was this demolished then uh, towards the end of 90s vajpay government came into be in 2002 there was gujarat pogrom the genocide of the muslims then under the upa government we know that this uh, move was strengthening by 19 2024 uh, 2014 when the modi government came bjp we know is its political tool rss political tool so using its political tool bjp the rss initiated the agenda of its uh, ultimate goal which i have already mentioned and uh, when modi came to power we know that uh, there was a far right shift even the planning commission was abolished and uh, decisions were being taken in corporate board rooms even parliament was made a spectator all these things were there and uh, by the end of the first term of modi government itself there was a move towards this uh, naked fascist policies because we know that the move for the uh, making muslims second class citizens through the amendment in the ca citizenship amendment amendment act was uh, brought forward and by 2019 by the second term of modi government we know that uh, immediately after coming to power what modi did was the abrogation of the article 370 thereby kashmir was broken into pieces and it was forcibly integrated into the indian union in violation of all previous understanding similarly modi himself led the foundation ceremony of the ram temple in the same place where the babri masjid was demolished so a series of moves were initiated and uh, uh, in continuation of that the new economic policy 2020 came into being where saffronization education was not only corporatized saffronization of education also was there agenda was put forward superimposition of sanskrit and hindi upon a 
the multinational, multilingual, multicultural, multi-religious, multi-ethnic India from the perspective of a majority agenda. Similarly, uh, the far right turning, this uh, neoliberal corporatization agenda was reflected in abolition of the 44 labor laws prevailing in India. And uh, everything was summarized into four labor codes. Tax system was made liberal. Corporate taxes were reduced from 30% to 15%, the lowest in, in the world today. And uh, while corporates were given all opportunities for plunder of nature and wealth ac accumulation, for weak levels of wealth accumulation, the number of billionaires and the wealth con concentration with them increased and at an unprecedented level. So these far-right and economic policies was uh, reflected in the life of the people too. We know that unemployment became unprecedented and uh, price level uh, shot up. India became the citadel of world poverty. In international agencies have shown that the Wealth of the country is concentrated in the hands of a few billionaires. Majority of the people were driven to destitution. And uh, in spite of the uh, much trumpeted statistics, the doctored statistics brought about by the government, the reality is that the people's life is in a bitter situation, in a, pain, in a painful situation. So it is in this context that the social fabric is in a total disruption in a frightening situation because of the fascistic policies imposed by Modi regime. And using the state power at its, at its command, RSS is given control for divisive policies, mutual hatred among people, distrust among different sections of the people, minorities were targeted, polarization was implemented, effected, and a majoritarian uh, agenda was put forward. So this was the trend that was there in the country since 2019, the second coming of Modi Rishi. And a series of policies, for example, recently we know the this, uh, this uh, trend has got further intensification. For example, recently the uh, so-called economic reservation for economically weaker sections, the 103rd amendment of the constitution and uh, which the Supreme Court endorsed it, which actually undermines the basic character of the constitution, the basic structure of the constitution. Because in our country, we know that this uh, reservation, caste-based reservation is incorporated into the constitution because of, it is a positive dis discrimination to do atonement to, to, as a justification for the historical injustice committed against the Dalits, the untouchables, that Dr. Ambakar, the chief architect of the Indian constitution, with his effort, this, uh, this uh, caste-based reservation was incorporated into the Indian constitution. But today we know that because of the Supreme Court endorsement, this has fundamentally changed. And uh, already we know the majority of the central government post, for example, 77% of the class one post in our country are cornered by the upper caste. 15% of the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas, including them. Uh, these uh, upper caste sections are cornering almost 77% of the class one post. Still, in the name of economic reservation, they are given an additional 10% by the Modi regime. And uh, even in that, in the name of economic reservation, if economic reservation, if economic backwardness is the criterion, then we must know that all people should be included. That is the principle under, underlined by the constitution, equality. But here also, the SCs, STs, and OBCs, 
were excluded the minorities were excluded and only those who were having this uh, uh, upper caste status who were not having any that kind of backwardness that kind of any uh, limitations they were given full 10% economic reservation which means that the whole government jobs will go into their custody but we must know that the situation also the political situation also we must know why how the court also is becoming part of the decision or part of this move because in 1993 a nine member bench of the supreme court made a historic judgment that uh, this caste uh, this economic reservation is unconstitutional and in 1991 the rao government had issued an executive order also before that the cpm had a resolution in in central committee resolution on november 4 1990 upholding economic reservation asking to demand economic reservation it was in that context the rao government also brought forward economic reservation in the background of the mandal commission report and the reservation uh, that is uh, uh, given to the obc community but the supreme court rejected it but today when the modi government which is the tool of the rss is in power even the court is also becoming part of this agenda and uh, very interestingly one of the judges who made this uh, major who was part of this majority judgment said that a caste based reservation is against a classless casteless egalitarian society so reservation is a problem now intelligentsia a whole set of intelligentsia experts are saying that reservation is the problem you need to speak about caste speaking about caste is the problem and even now rss is also saying that we need not speak about the caste because caste is part of the system that was what goldworker said caste is casteism is the nation itself that is what goldworker said therefore this uh, economic reservation is a direct attack against the this is under, not only undermining the constitution it is an attack against the the oppressed caste the untouchable people we must know that in 1949 and 50 during that period when the constitution was being in the process of drafting by when the constituent assembly drafted the constitution when it was adopted in 1946 it was uh, finalized in 1949 november 26 rss in its organizer in its mouthpiece demanded that manusmriti should be the constitution and this was repeated in 1950 also in its uh, mouthpiece organizer and demanded manusmriti because uh, it is now moving to that direction manu courts have already been there in india even in meerut it was reported that a manu court was started so that is the situation today and now when the political when political power is at its command at its control not only the uh, even along with the judicial system the whole administrative institutions the whole civilian establishments and uh, including education including culture including scientific research everything is now the whole macro not only macro even the micro aspects of the spaces of social life even street power not only street power street power is also now with rss so the biggest organ fascist organization is fully controlling the reins of the country that is a very dark situation that we are facing today and uh, along with this many other agenda are coming forward today for example now the recent elections are uh, in gujarat and in uh, imajal pradesh even the delhi municipal election we have seen there also the situation is not favorable for the people because we know that the agenda the campaigns were such that who will be in the good book to serve rss in gujarat also the congress was actually uh, not there in the campaign field the ap the aap which was competing with the bjp was trying to become more hindutva because of its demands because of its slogans 
ਜੋ ਅਸ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੁੱਟ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਦੀ ਅਜਰ ਡਿਮਾਂਡ ਦੈਟ ਲੈਸ਼ਮੀ ਐਂਡ ਦਿਸ ਗਨੇ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਦੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਕਰੰਸੀ ਨੋਟਸ ਦ ਪਿਕਚਰ ਆਫ ਦਿਸ ਡੈਟੀ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਕਰੰਸੀ ਨੋਟਸ ਸਿਮਿਲਰਲੀ ਵੈਨ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਇਨ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਵੈਨ ਦੀ ਦਿਸ ਬੁਲਡੋਸਰ ਰਾਜ ਵਾਸ ਬੀਂਗ ਇੰਪਲੀਮੈਂਟਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਫਾਸਿਸ ਦੀ ਆਪ ਵਾਸ ਸਾਇਲੈਂਟ ਔਨ ਥੈਟ ਵੈਨ ਦ ਰੋਹਿੰਗਿਆਸ ਵੇਅਰ tarnished the most persecuted minority in the world according to un what was the approach of the aap so the aap like forces which as rss leaders have said bjp is only one of our political tools we can use any political party for our agenda so that is the situation today it is a horrific situation it is a painful situation a frightening situation so it is in this context that we have to discuss we have to this uh, take up this question in the proper political perspective we must know that at a global level fascism is advancing today because neo fascism not only in india even in the americas even in europe everywhere fascist forces are now advancing neo fascism is on the offensive taking advantage of the setbacks stating stating taking advantage of the ideological political setbacks of the left and uh, in the context of the crisis of imperialism international capital especially since the crisis of the 2008 now neo fascism is advancing everywhere according to the concrete situation according to the historical context many any reactionary ideology can be used by fascists for example in the america cities evangelism we know how bolsonaro was using it we know how trump was using it similarly they can use political islam in the west in west asia even in sri lanka and myanmar they are using buddhism as the ideological basis of neo fascism in israel we know how sadism is being used so any ideology can be used by fascists according to the situation according to the context in which it is fascism is developing so it is a task of the left we must understand today that only by analyzing only by having a proper ideological political understanding on this particular uh, world situation and uh, the situation in our country also because we know that in india the situation is more horrific more pain more serious because here we are one of the biggest countries in the world and where many diversities are there and irrespective of these diversities irrespective of the the uh, the situation in the country uh, uh, do you, uh, now what is going on the recently the home minister went to Asama and he said that we are going to have a new history. Which means that history is also going to be rewritten according to the fascist interest. So this is also a trend today. Now a new history writing is there in Europe also. European neo-fascists are now entering into what is called a new history writing. They are now saying that what happened in the anti-fascist struggle was not proper. hitler should have been instead of de- being defeated by the alliance the anti fascist alliance hitler should hitler should have united against with the, the us and the Brit- Brit- british the the that means churchill and roosevelt should have united with hitler instead of uniting with stalin this is the new understanding new way of thinking that is going on that such a new history writing is also developing there similarly in our country also fascists are now entering into all fields in education in history in scientific education and uh, this uh, uh, hindutva manivad which is ideological basis of rss fascism is bouncing back with intensified vigor even in institutions of higher learning dalits are being dalit students are being targeted isolated they are forced to commit suicide so this is we know the 
the the history of rohit bemla and the others even iits what we are seeing today so a fascist and neo fascist offensive whose ideological basis is manuvad manusmriti is now developing throughout the country it is a sad situation that uh, the the other parties the really other ruling class parties which are criticizing the bjp even though they are criticizing the bjp their criticism is only confining to or only with regard to the uh, sharing of power who should rule that soul but from you come to the ideological question when we come to the neo liberal policies which are now developing this question should be very seriously discussed today for example we now see in order to serve the corporates in order to serve corporate capital all the ruling classes are now uniting what we are seeing in for example some sections for example cpm like parties which are self which are claiming themselves as, as marxist they are saying that fascism has not had come to india those symptoms of fascism are there india is not a fascist country according to them because they are also implementing the same policies which modi government is implementing for example what we are seeing in kerala today that uh, adani the biggest uh, indian corporate the richest indian corporate and the third uh, third largest according to forbes real time billionaires list so adani serving adani not to serve adani now both bjp and cpm are joining together in kerala so this is the situation and we must know that this fascism is inseparable from the interest of capital fascism is not a separate one from the interest of capitalism so today finance capital corporate capital is using the most reactionary ideology in order to subserve its interests because fascism is actually the the terrorist the dictatorship the rule of the most reactionary elements of corporate capital finance capital and that is why the fascists are now in joining with in unison with the corporates in our country and uh, along with that as i have already said along with these uh, policies like economic reservation other agenda are also being brought forward for example recently the home minister amit shah had a what is called a chintan shibar chintan shibar that means a home ministers uh, meeting submit you, uh, of the country Yeah, by the end of October, a meeting was held. There are certain new agendas where agenda were proposed. So, what was it? Say one uniform, one police, one nation. Such slogans were put forward. And even it was also decided, proposed that NIA should have its office by 2024. In each state, NIA office should be opened. So, this is a majoritarian. superimposing the majority on agenda in gross violation of the for example according to the 7th schedule of the indian constitution the state has power over policing so a pan indian policing is now superimposed those who are criticizing those who are opposing these policies these neo liberal policies these fascistic policies they are termed they are branded as anti nationalists they are branded as extremists or terrorists and they are put in jails uipa is superimposed wantonly used against dissidents so this is the situation students are not left students in campuses who are raising democratic questions who are for a fighting for a democratic society they are also put or they are also put in bar and they are also termed as anti nationalists so this is going on in the country so a very horrific situation that we are experience it is in this context that the cpiml rashtra after evaluating the situation based on the political resolution already adopted by the party which called for an immediate intervention with all like minded forces 
workers, peasants, and all oppressed to carry forward an All India campaign, political campaign against the RSS neo fascism in our country today. And in this task, the party is calling all like minded forces, all non fascist forces who are ready to join with this campaign. And uh, according to the present situation, according to the situation in our, uh, which we are, our party, where we are working, for example, in all states where we are working, for example, in Rajasthan, the state committee has planned a campaign, a political campaign against the statue, the Manu statue, which is being erected in Jaipur, in the front of the Jaipur court. In Tamil Nadu, the December 25th is a keyword money day, where the landless poor peasants, the Delhi's were massacred by the, the landlords, upper, the upper caste landlords. So this, uh, in all over the, in Karnataka, in Kerala, all over in Chhattisgarh, all over the country, the party is having this campaign in different forms and different ways. Similarly, an ideological, ideological campaign is also initiated because we must see that today the ideological basis of neo fascism in India, RSS fascism in India, is Manivad Hindutva. According to Manisprati, we know that deals, that treats what the working people, the those who are the toilets or tillers of the soil, they are now treated as uh, untouchables, subhuman. Women are treated as subhuman. And it was on December 25 that Dr. Ambakar banned this Manismurti. And it is a symbolic, it is, it is a very important right, December 25. So when we, this uh, campaign is going to culminate on December 25, Naturally, this will be a historic event. It will be a historic uh, political campaign in our country because starting from December 26 to December 25, taking up various questions, taking up various issues connected with this trend, not only the ideological questions, even economic questions, the situation in our country, the situation in the agriculture sector, because we know that the farm laws, which were implemented by the Modi government. And we know that it was implemented under the directive of WTO, World Retire Organization. As, as directed by the World Retire Organization, it was mandatory, it was, uh, 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 it was essential for the Modi government to uh, commit to the demands. And that was why when the COVID was at its, uh, when the the, this uh, pandemic was uh, in, in, at its I, I, I peak. The parliament was met in September 2020 and immediately these farm laws were passed. And now, because of the heroic struggle of the farmers, the historic struggle of the farmers, though the, these uh, farm laws were frozen, now we know that these farm laws are now being implemented by BJP ruled states, Karnataka like states have already started implementing it. And uh, we know these agribusiness interests, agribusiness companies, not only really Indian agribusiness companies like Adani Ambani, even uh, Cargill, Monsanto, all of these are now entering into the country. The whole agriculture is, the whole inputs are now being under the control of fertilizer, seed, everything is under the control of agribusiness companies, corporates. Similarly, the output, agriculture output is also going to be under the control of the agribusiness corporate interests. So the farmers are facing a, a very serious situation. Similarly, the working class, which I have already mentioned, and all labor laws, all tax laws, all environmental laws are deregulated and even the environmental impact assessment 
which was actually abrogating, violating, abolishing all existing environment regulations in the country. An environment impact assessment was brought forward. And uh, that is also now a serious question in the country. So in all fields, in the education field, in the, uh, uh, in the, in the field of this uh, uh, in the environment, in the field of labor, in the field of tax. So in all fields, the far right pro-corporate policies are advancing. So corporatization and sovereignization are now moving hand in hand. So it is in this corporate sovereign fascist uh, regime situation that uh, CPM and Rakhstar is now going for a national campaign. And we appeal to all people. We appeal to all well-meaning, all progressive, all democratic sections to be part of this national campaign. And uh, here, along with this political campaign, we must also have a uh, we must think about how, what should be the political alternative? What should be the people's alternative against this neo-fascist, uh, emerging neo-fascist situation? We must have a people's alternative. We must put forward in our thinking, in our discussion, in our campaigns. We must put forward that unless we take a firm position against the neoliberal corporatization policies that are now advancing in our country, how the fascist forces and the corporate forces are now merging together. So understanding this question, we must put forward a people's alternative, a political alternative, along with our campaign. And uh, only by taking a political alternative and only by putting forward in our campaigns what should be the alternative. And uh, in that way, we must enrich, we must develop this campaign in its advance, in its uh, stepping forward. So comrades, this uh, situation in our country today is one of the darkest in our history. And uh, because we know that when RSS formed in 1925, when European fascism was advancing, it was upholding cultural nationalism. And it's the essence of its cultural nationalism, we know. Because in Afro-Asian Latin American countries, nationalism means, the essence of nationalism means anti-colonial. Anti-colonial, it is against colonialism. It is against imperialism. But during the colonial days, the forces who are now controlling the reins of power today, they were not against colonial powers. They were with the colonial powers. At that time, the leaders of RSS, they said that uh, the enemies of our country are not colonialists. Because uh, we know that Goldwalker, in his book, in his uh, famous books, said that the enemies of India are Muslims, especially Muslims, Christians, and communists, not uh, colonialists. Today also, when RSS is now holding state power through its political tool. Of course, which I have already said, BJP is only one of its political tools today. So when it is holding state power, today RSS is in, in uh, uh, unity with the far right forces. It is in unity with the neoliberal corporate forces. And it is against the interests of the people also. Because today, even though we say that India is now becoming the head of the G20, our policy decisions are made by IMF and World Bank, by WTO. Even our policy decisions are taken by international capital, imbalanced forces. And now we are our, this, uh, the Indian corporates are actually junior parts, partners of these imperialist powers. They are, they are having their, their role is as a junior partner. That is their role today. And in that sense, these uh, uh, policies of the Modi regime is actually against the interests of the country also. It is against the interests of the people. It is against the working class and the vast and the vast majority of the oppressed people. 
So in that way we have to see. So today, in the name of patriotism, in the name of nationalism, we must see that RSS is actually serving the interests of global capital, and they are now having their agenda and their policies. The policies of the BJP regime are in that way. Therefore, on that question also, we must have a clarity. Comrades, I am not explaining much. Today, the situation is so serious because even in not only in the civilian situation, even in military also, we know that the Agnivat scheme, because in the recruitment of his troops, now the RSS is going, the fascist forces are going to have their say. And uh, the RSS has already started through its uh, uh, institution, Vidya Bharati. It has already initiated military schools. And those who are coming from RSS military schools will be recruited into Indian Army as officers. So a grave situation is there. So not only the administrative, judicial, and uh, other establishments, even in military also, the Suffering forces, sovereignization is advancing. So it is in that perspective that we have to take an all embracing understanding of the situation. And because the forces who are now controlling the suffering forces, the Sagabariwa, they have hundreds of secret and open organizations. And uh, it is in that way they are now capable to control street power along with the state power. So taking this situation, making an objective analysis of the situation and taking a political approach, at the same time joining with all non-fascist forces against the imminent threat. Because fascism is a specific case where we have to unite with all non-fascist forces also. And in that way, we should be broad enough and uh, while taking our independent position, while upholding the interests of the oppressed and the working class, while upholding the class interests of the people, we have to have a, an alliance with the non-fascist forces against the fascists, defeating, resisting and defeating the fascists. So from that perspective, it is high time on our part that we have to unite with all forces in our struggle against fascism today. And it is that, based on that sense, that the Central Committee of CPM and Rashta made a call, a nationwide call, a campaign, a struggle, asking, requesting people and all forces to join the struggle against RSS neo-fascism, resisting and defeating it. And uh, we must be aware of the situation that unless we come forward, the, the situation in our country will be very serious. So I am concluding with uh, our appeal that uh, from December 26, the day when Babri Masjid was demolished, we know, and uh, uh, the day of the centenary, I mean, sorry, anniversary of Dr. Ambakar, is uh, Ambakar's death. And ending with uh, the August, uh, I mean, December 25, when Manisprati was banned by Dr. Ambakar. So during these 20 days, the party will have a nationwide campaign. And I request all progressive, all democratic, all well-meaning, all struggling people to join with us in this historic campaign and struggle. Thank you, comrades and friends.